know you guys are dying to get outside and start grilling, so I've gathered together some of my favorite grilling recipes to start you off. I've got a delicious grilled shrimp with chimichurri sauce, and how about grilled pizza with tomatoes and basil? Check it out. Guys, we're gonna have to hurry up because I already put my pasta in the water before I realized it only takes eight minutes to boil for this grilled ratatouille pasta. So delicious, so seasonal, using all the vegetables that are in season right now, but they're not gonna be for long, so make this dinner tonight. I have one pepper, a red pepper, one small onion. Peel and, and just have it. Make sure it's small because you're grilling it and you wanna make sure it cooks properly. Four tomatoes, smallish, medium, thick slices. If they're kind of small, you could even just cut them in half. Don't be too worried about it. You don't want them to fall apart or get mushy on the grill. I'm gonna put these on a tray. One zook, also in thick slices, lengthwise. Aren't these all so cute? Farmer's market. And one eggplant. Maybe you don't like eggplant, but you're gonna like it in this dish. Okay, they need to get brushed with oil so they don't stick. And also, it helps them taste delicious. You are gonna make a sauce later with a little bit of oil, so I guess don't overdo it. Season with salt, don't forget salt. Once they're all brushed with oil, then they're gonna go on a medium high grill. You might have to work in batches if your grill's not that big. And then just throw them on. I mean, delicately placed. Oh, I'm gonna go get my pasta. Are you ready, little pasta? Look how cute, I just love them. Oh, wow. They weren't kidding when they said eight minutes. This is done. I'm gonna throw this back in the pot, set it aside. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drizzle it with a little bit of oil, just so it doesn't stick together while it's waiting. I don't think they, the tomatoes need to be too, too done. They just need to soften a little bit. Same thing with the peppers. Zucchini, I would like them pretty well done. Magically, everything is done. Yay! These all have to get cut up. This needs some parsley too, about a quarter of a cup. Now this gets tossed with the delicious pasta. We're bulking it up with the delicious vegetables. The last few touches, about two tablespoons of balsamic, preferably white. If you can't get white, use the regular, it's fine. And then about two tablespoons of olive oil. Maybe it needs salt, why not? You want pepper, go ahead. And of course, had I saved pasta water, I could loosen it with a little pasta water. But look, it really doesn't need it. I am putting this on a plate. Ah, it's gorgeous, it's fresh. You could eat this cold too, make it into a pasta salad. How about a little sprig of parsley on top? What do you think about that? Are you ready for grilling season yet? Today I'm gonna to share a great recipe with you. It's summer peppers and tomatoes and shrimp, both grilled on skewers and served with a delicious herby chimichurri sauce. So skewer up all of your vegetables. I have pre-cooked these peppers. These are called summer peppers, but they take a little bit more time to cook than tomatoes. So you might wanna pre-cook them a little bit in salted boiling water. Skewer those with your cherry tomatoes. Once they're pre-cooked, they'll cook at the same rate as your tomatoes. Same thing for shrimp. I have large shrimp that are peeled and deveined. Skewer about four per skewer. To serve 10 people, you'll want about two and a half pounds of large shrimp, two pints of cherry tomatoes, and maybe 12 of the peppers. To make your chimichurri sauce, start by chopping two cloves of garlic, mincing them really. You want them extra, extra fine. You also need one and a half teaspoons of grated lemon zest. Make sure you wash your lemons or use organic if you're gonna be using the zest. Add it to one cup of extra virgin olive oil, the best you can get. And then chop one third cup of fresh basil. Chimichurri is a very herb heavy sauce. We're using parsley, dill, mint, basil, and chives. Add the basil to your olive oil and lemon zest. Add the garlic as well. Now the recipe doesn't call for it, but most chimichurris have some kind of acidity. Since I have a lemon, I'm gonna add some lemon juice, about a tablespoon or two. Then add a half a cup of parsley, chopped obviously, quarter cup of chopped chives, two tablespoons of chopped mint, and two tablespoons of chopped dill. There you go. This is delicious. Oh, you probably wanna add a little bit of salt too. Salt is a flavor enhancer, you can't get around it. You don't have to use as much as I use, but you wanna use least some. Otherwise your food will be a little bit bland. Okay, time to grill. Have your grill preheating to medium high and then lightly brush it with vegetable oil. Drizzle your shrimp with olive oil. Not too much because the grill is already oiled, should be pretty stick free. And then season with some salt. 
can season your peppers and tomatoes as well. And then just transfer everything to the grill. The peppers and the tomatoes will actually take longer to cook than the shrimp. So if you want everything to come off at the same time, start with your peppers and your tomatoes. Those should take about six to eight minutes and the shrimp will only take about three minutes. So that's your timing. Add your shrimp. Shrimp should take about three to four minutes. You're gonna to wanna to turn those once as well. Give them a turn. You wanna cook the shrimp until they're opaque throughout and pink. And then the tomatoes need to be just slightly bursting and the peppers should be charred. Spoon some chimichurri over everything. Make sure to serve more on the side. Make a batch of chimichurri to serve on all your grilled foods this summer. But first, make this recipe. Grilled shrimp skewers, peppers, and tomatoes. It's summertime, so instead of baking my pizza, I'm gonna grill pizza. Have you ever grilled pizza? I need one cup of warm water in a nice big bowl, so I'm gonna make the dough. Sometimes I buy the dough, sometimes I make the dough. I need a teaspoon of sugar. The sugar helps activate the yeast because the yeast is a living organism and it eats the sugar. So you need one package. Stir it up, just dissolve the sugar and then sprinkle in the yeast. Active dry yeast and let it sit for about five minutes. You could just start adding your flour now, but this is a safety measure. See how it's starting to foam? That's exactly what you're looking for. Now you know it's active and you can add about two teaspoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of salt, stir that up, and then two and a quarter cups of flour. Stir in the flour. It's gonna make a really wet dough. Don't be afraid. Take your dough, you're gonna have to knead it, so make a really nicely floured surface. And then knead your dough for about two minutes. You're gonna need to keep your hands super floured because it's a very wet dough. And you could add in up to like a half a cup more flour if you need to, to make it um, something that you can handle. And in fact, if you really wanted to, you could add like a half a cup more flour to the flour in the beginning. Once it's done, and it's no longer too sticky, is let it rise in an oiled bowl. Nice big bowl, and then transfer your dough to the bowl, turn it over so it's coated with oil, cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise for about 45 minutes. It needs to double in bulk. The dough is risen. Wait till you see what it looks like. It's all bubbly and light and airy. Then what you wanna do is flour a surface again. Put your dough right onto the surface and then cut it into four pieces, and then you need to let it rest again. Resting allows it to, the dough to relax, which makes it much easier to shape into whatever shape you want. So just let it sit for about 15 minutes. You can cover it with plastic wrap again so it doesn't dry out. You need something to transfer the dough once it's shaped onto the grill. So I'm gonna use the back of a baking sheet and then take one piece of dough, keep the rest covered, and stretch it into a 10-inch oval. Drizzle slash brush it with oil. You're gonna do both sides. What you do with the grilled pizza is you cook the dough first and then you put the toppings on at the very last minute. So you oil this side and you put it down on the grill, you oil the other side, you know, you'll see. That's it. Put it on the grill. Then just oil this also, second side. Cooks really fast. Just give it a couple more seconds. Turn it over. I oiled the second side. Tomato sauce, any kind that you like. Here's where you can get creative. Any kind of toppings that you want, and then you can just tear the mozzarella if you want to. I'm just gonna tear it because I like the rustic appearance, but it's your choice. And then you do need to cover just to let the mozzarella melt a little bit. You're gonna cover this so that the cheese melts and the dough cooks through. <gasps> is that ready? I think it is. Nice and charred on the bottom, but not burned. I wanna transfer it to the cutting board. Oh, steamy and delicious. A Little bit of salt and then tear some basil on top, and you're good. Cut it up. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Yay! I highly recommend that you try this today.